This is of the press. Good morning to you, and thanks for joining us this Wednesday morning. The program where we will take a look at our national dailies and try to make sense of it as much as time will allow us. And I won't be doing that alone today. I'll be joined uh, via Zoom virtually by Aisha Yesufu, who is the co-convener of Bring Back Our Girls. She will be joining me as uh, a reviewer this morning. Good to have you, Aisha. Thank you so much. It's good always to be here. How Thank are you. you out there today? No, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. And I hope you all are over there in Nigeria. Yes, we are, well, we are okay. <laughs> we are good, Aisha. <laughs> now, we have a couple of papers, but we shall begin with the Guardian newspaper. Uh, it will be displayed okay. uh, right now, and then I will take the headlines. It's already displayed. Thank you very much to the production crew. Ondo Assembly begins uh, Deputy Governor's impeachment pros process. Nine members kick. That story is on page 23. Crisis in Imo State Assembly over plot to sack the Speaker on page 29. Keamo kicks as Ingege apologizes to NAS over 774,000 jobs on page 4. Now there's a very weird story there to the right. But I'll take it after the main... Uh, the main the headline there, five airlines restart flights amid street protocol. Now, the weird story, my father impregnated me three eyes. Cack pastor's daughter tells police. That's so sad. That story is on page eight. The things that are happening in Nigeria. All right, we have uh, the picture story of what the airport is looking like. Um, so today, people who have been itching to travel, there you go. And we have the updates on COVID-19. As you can see, globally, uh, the figures are there. Locally, the figures are there. Just to say that today, for Nigeria, we are now at 29,879 confirmed cases. Confirmed cases. 12,108 have recovered, thankfully. Uh, but unfortunately, 669 uh, people have died as a result of COVID-19. Now, the other news there, EFCC boss Magu suspended. Uh, there's uh, no one, um, no one is above scrutiny, President CFM's indictment, uh, a slap on Buhari's anti graft campaign. CSO tasks President to um, finding new Hemsman. All right, that's all we've got on, on the Guardian newspaper this morning. I'm going to hand over to to you, Aisha, but before I do that, just on the, the news on the flight, it says, uncertainty over bailout funds, on board physical distancing, travel experts project 30% load factor, new normal awaits travelers, no food in flight. Oh, wow. All right, I let's begin. Which story do you want us to review first? Uh, for me, the story I, I want to review first would be the one that says my father impregnated me first, uh, CAC pastor's daughter tells police. And I think uh, amidst the rape uh, pandemic in Nigeria, uh, we have a lot of this. And sometimes you find that when you're turning, oh, please think of them like your daughter, think of them like your sisters, think of them like your... I mean, if nobody cares, it, it, it seems to, girls are not safe from from even their fathers, and, and that's, that's abominable. I, I mean, we are, we, are, we are a society that is always so religious, yet we don't take certain things seriously. For as far as I'm concerned, there, there is a need for us to shut down Nigeria for at least 24 hours for us to tackle uh, this rape issue. It's mm. becoming too much. Mm. It's, quite, it's quite sad. I mean, it's quite sad. The way you put it there, it's, it's a pandemic, really. Um, every other day we hear this. And the yeah. news and it's very overwhelming uh, to have to deal with all of this listening you know talking about it and there seem to be no no results but anyway the good news is that i'm sure you saw in the news that um, the bill is passed um, waiting for uh, president buhari to uh, assent it that's the bill that punishes mm -hmm. uh, lecturers and those you know who go about raping or sexually abusing their students. And the good part is they will be charged whether th there is consent or no consent, you know. They will be charged yeah. for the act. So that's a bit of good news, if you like. Yeah, so we move quickly away from that. What, what's your thoughts? People are beginning to travel um, now in Nigeria. Uh, at least there are those who have been itching to travel. So yeah, it's today. 
Let's see how that is yeah, going to go for. Yeah, and uh, of course, the first first flight, uh, some flight have landed in Abuja already that took off from Lagos. <laughs> and uh, it, it's quite a, a welcome development in a way because there are a lot of people who have been stranded in other places and if people need to go back, get back to their base. But one of the things, of course, that we need to uh, work on is to ensure that this strict compliance does not go the way of the normal Nigerian thing. After a while, we get used to it and then we just begin not to bother because we are a people of inshallah, we are a people of, uh, in Jesus' name, we are people of it to not become our portion. And instead of us to use the brain that God has given us to, to, to do basic uh, uh, monitoring and checking ourselves, we end up not, not doing that. Uh, it, it is a welcome development. And at the same time, again, uh, just hoping that these airlines will not have to lapse, uh, you know, uh, because it, they've really been hit. They've really been hard hit. And sure. hopefully they are able to get the kind of uh, uh, measures they can get from government for them to be able to stay afloat and, and, and do what they've been doing. I mean, not running your business for almost three, four months. It's, it's actually quite devastating. It is. Yeah, I agree with you. They've been uh, quite hit there when we talk of the economic uh, value of what they do. All right. Let me... I'm sure, Aisha, even though you're away from home, you're seeing all the news about EFCC, DSS, arrest or not arrest, investigation, invitation. What's your thought? Now, Magu has been suspended, even... Um, how do you how did that hit you when you were reading all of these things unfolding just between 24 less than 48 hours uh, different for, sides of it emanating for me uh, how did that hit me just just hilarious i i i remember just you know i i came back online on social media on the first of july mm. and uh, i just remember just going to it and i saw uh, he, he, uh, he had been arrested by the breaking news. Mango has been arrested by SFA. And I just, I just posted into laughter. I mean, it, it's just, it's as expected. But the most important thing that, that, that for me, the question is, is this administration now ready to fight corruption? Because there are a lot of people that corruption allegation uh, mm -hmm. are against them within the government. We have the uh, Minister of Humanitarian uh, Affairs being accused. We have the minister of uh, is it communication is that being like mm -hmm. so there are quite a number of them so is it that or is there a power play because we saw the situation whereby uh, the uh, attorney general of the federation had had issues they were you know there was a tussle between him and the uh, efcc uh this debate overall this is a huge indi indictment there has to be the corruption in this administration it, it's unbelievable it's unprecedented i mean it's with impunity there's another one uh of course i can't remember what he is exactly for the first his name is Sabi Zunde, whether it's his pa or something who has been accused of having so much money in his back account somebody who had nothing who was Supposedly, it was said to be reported to be a recharge card seller. All of a sudden, has billions and billions and billions in his accounts, and then he says they are gifts. He said they are gifts. Thinking, item. <laughs> yeah, hello. Yeah. He, he said, said they, they are, are gifts. Item. And your mom gifts. Why did they not give this gift when he was selling recharge card in, in, in his in his Katsina state? And from the reports that we hear, so all of this is played out. But the, the key thing is, is the fact that. You know, this saga of uh, 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 Magu didn't start today. It started in 2016 when the Senate uh, refused to confirm him. And most of us felt that, oh, the, the Senate was being uh, vindictive because uh, they didn't want uh, somebody that would come and probe them. Mm -hmm. But there was a, an SSS uh, report, a DSS report. Uh, and then we wondered, why did the president still forward his name if there was anything indicted in, in that report? But at the end of the day, I mean, whatever... Uh, uh, we had the, this whole saga with the hush puppy arrest mm. and the and, and the fact and the knowledge that he was into uh, 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 corruption. I was into fraud, 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 fraud right? Yeah. But this particular arrest is a more hit to Nigeria. I mean, this not not the arrest itself, but the uh, the re uh, revelation yeah. that the person that we have as the head of. Uh, the anti-corruption organization is actually corrupt himself. And so we are all in the news again for all the bad, bad, bad reasons. But it's unfortunate. But for me, I, I'm saying that since now that President uh, Muhammad Buhari has found his suspension button, can he use it more? Because we have a lot of people that need 
to be suspended, starting <laughs> with the uh, service chiefs <laughs> and a whole lot of other corrupt uh, people who have, have been accused of corruption. Right. Aisha, let's move to another paper in the interest of time, and that will be Tribune. Uh, it would be displayed on the screen uh, already. Uh, again, the, the story there is 774,000 jobs. Kayamo again disagrees with Senate as Ngige apologizes on the front page but continued on page six. Kwara Governor's uh, Chief of Staff dies of COVID-19, unfortunately, on page. Uh, that story is inside the newspaper. U.S. begins formal withdrawal from World Health Organization on page three. Enough is enough. Reopen all churches now, Khan tells uh, the state government on page four. Senate passes a sexual harassment bill on page two. Margo's probe creates uncertainty, uh, uncertainty in EFCC. That's on page three. A presidential probe a panel sitting enters day two. President Simon on his reported suspension. Anti-corruption chief moves belongings out of office. Security operatives search his house. He must be treated fairly, Serap says. He must be sacked now, says coalition of lawyers. Different opinions there. Now we'll still move on. That's all of those you, is contained in page three of the Tribune. Um, no face mask, no exams. That's according to WAEC. 1.55 million candidates to sit exam, uh, sit for the exam. That's a lot of them. Under assembly serves a deputy governor impeachment notice and nine lawmakers say no to that on page seven. Uh, Senate wants Ibadan Airport renamed after Ajimobi. All right, page 27. Uh, reps to probe NNPC over $1.05 billion illegal withdrawal from NLNG account uh, to probe Labor Minister as well over suspension of NS uh, ITF management. This also you find in there in Tribune. There seem to be so many stories here. Uh, there's the, that one, the one of Ngige and Keamo. Ngige apologizes and Keamo feels that no, that's not right. You shouldn't do that. That conversation we started, uh, we had it last week. Um, Aisha, do you still have any thoughts on that? Uh, well, I, I would say, well, it's a normal thing. I mean, uh, Ngige is the minister, right? And Keamo is the minister of state. So, you know, so it's a normal thing for, for somebody, a leader to take uh, when it comes to things like this to apologize on behalf of what you're, uh, what you're doing. But at the end of the day, for me, the main issue is the 774,000 jobs. Is it sustainable? Is it feasible? We are putting 50 something billion to just pay people for three months. How sustainable is that? Mm -hmm. Those billions could be used to create a more enabling environment for people to be able to employ quite a number of people. So, those for me, uh, that's where the main uh, issue is. It's not the apology and the drama they are doing. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, th there's a story on you know, uh, reopening of worship centers. Again, uh, the Khan president, I believe, is saying uh, enough is enough. Open, open the churches. L let's get back to praying to God in uh, the buildings. W what's your thoughts? I know you had a different opinion uh, the last time we talked yeah. about this. D did your opinion change, Aisha, or you still stick, <laughs> stick to that? No, it, it, has, it hasn't changed. And I think uh, we, we, we must understand that God is closer to us than even the blood that puts in our body. We, do, we don't have to be in a particular place for God to, to hear our prayers. And when I see this uh, warning that Khan is giving and uh, all the, you know, both the uh, uh, Muslim uh, body and everything about reopen churches, reopen mosques, everything, let things be. Why can't they put this energy towards demanding for good governance? Why can't they put this energy towards demanding that, oh, the, the killings be stopped? Why can't they put, put this uh, energy to so demand for good things in Nigeria? I mean, God will not do for us what he has given us capacity to do for ourselves. But yet we want a situation whereby we will go back and we'll just, we'll just be praying and actually doing nothing. I mean, mm. if we need to go, we need to go beyond that. The greatest miracle that we have is the prayer that God gave, gave to us. And as citizens, we need to start using them. <laughs> Instead of waiting to pray, 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 abdicate our responsibilities and expect that God will do for us what he has given us capacity to do for ourselves. Actually, it's, it's interesting how you put it there, that the greatest miracle that God has given us is our brain. Huh? We should put it to task. We hope we, we, we hope we'll do that uh, in Nigeria. We'll continue to do that rather in Nigeria. Let's take a look at the Nation newspaper and see what is there for us this morning. Um, Naira to exchange at 381 Naira uh, a, a, to a dollar, currency down by 5.54%. 
Chikobi leads lobby for AFDB's additional banker who's U.S. on page 25. UBA appoints Leadi and Alauba DMDs. WAEG needs 50 million, uh, P 50 million Naira PPEs to kit supervisors and others. 50 million Naira. That's on page 5. All right. Um, why APC? That's on Edo, Edo Poll 2020. Please take a look and find out what's going on with their preparation. Detectives search Margo's house as probe continues. EFCC chair returns to custody after second day of grilling and three shortlisted for the job already. Interesting. That's always on the front page uh, of the nation newspaper. And then we have a picture story down there. Um, uh, some military uh, activity going on there, I believe. APC lashes on Do Deputy Governor as House begins impeachment pro uh, process. Ajayi plots will fail and a current dilute to security. Probe X SSG. Now, Kwara Chief of Staff dies of COVID 19, and Lagos Council Chairman uh, tenure is four years. Again, we also have the we have the COVID-19 updates. Nigeria is now at 29,000 uh, plus, 789 precisely, actually, and 669 persons have died from COVID. Uh, 12,108, I believe, recovered. But we still have active cases of about 17,012. That's still a lot. Aisha, let's begin. Uh, what do you say, have to say from the nation newspaper? I, I think uh, it's the one I'm going to look at first is the, where is it right now? The chief of staff, right, of yeah, Paris State, State that yes. died mm. of uh, COVID-19. He so rest in peace. Amen. But I want to call out warning to our politicians. You know, COVID-19 is not like the normal, uh, the other diseases that they can play, that they have played with, you understand? COVID-19 is a leveler. It, mm. it doesn't care whether you are, you, you, you are a politician, you are powerful, you have money, it doesn't care. And the thing is that the normal way of, if they're going to handle this COVID-19 with their self, in the selfish way that our politicians have, which is to take care of them, themselves and their families and forget the rest of the people, you will get that test, you will go negative, and then it will be your house help, it will be your driver, it will be the normal people that will affect you. So it is very important for all of us to be very mindful about this disease. I see the way with impunity, a good number of our leaders, they are just working about really, I saw what happened in Edo State, our Baseki went to PDP to go and register when he did, they did their primaries. Almost no mass, people were just all together and everything. So this is a disease that doesn't care what power you have. It's gonna come after everybody and it goes through the air. So there's so much that we need to do uh, on, on, on this particular uh, COVID-19. Mm. Right. So having said that, the next thing I'm going to look at is the issue of Marco again. And for me, I'm like, please, he should be protected as much as possible. And we want him to sing. Let him sing like a bird. Let him talk about all the corruption going on. Let him let him come out and, and say things. Because it is time for Nigeria to, 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 to begin to be on the path of, of doing the right thing. Corruption should not should not be condoned. I see a lot of citizens condoning corrupt, corruption. They feel that, oh, it's okay when you are there. Uh, that's why they say to you, oh, you are angry because we're not giving appointment. Why? They see as appointment as a, as a way to go and collect uh, and begin to loot public funds. And so it's very important for us to get our details as much as possible and if possible to get as much detail as we can from other people who have been doing um, uh, all of that. Mm -hmm. And then finally, let me just look at this on the whole issue crisis, yeah. impeachment and everything. I think there's a need for the state, state House of Assemblies to, to begin to get some sort of independence. They are too much under the, sort of like under the thumb of the governor. So you find out most times that when something happens, the governor is able to direct how the, uh, uh, how things will go. Mm -hmm. It is time for that independence to happen. And I, I'm, I'm quite glad to see I don't know much about what's going on there, but I'm quite glad to see the Ondo State uh, uh, House of Assembly put it, digging their feet in and say, no, we, we can't, you can't just tell us to what to do. So. Right. All right. Thank you very much. I, let's just quickly take a look at the Punch newspaper and see what they've got. We are almost out of time. Uh, Ghana reopens uh, 600 Nigerians shop after six months on page seven. Why did they lock up the shops? Find out for yourself. The story is on um, page seven. 
Continued closure of church is no longer justifiable, according to the Khan, uh, Ayo Kunle Khan, Khan president there. WAIAC releases guidelines for 2020 uh, West African uh, um, examinations. Reps summon NMPC and NLNG over $1.05 billion withdrawal on page 17. And allegations of corruption, that's the big story. Police come Mago's house after suspension, and he returns again to custody. Uh, allegations against EFCC boss to too weighty to be ignored, according to an official. MBA backs probe says anti-graft agencies chair not above the law. All right. We also have picture stories there, again, of the Nigerian military. Uh, I believe that's some of their out in there. And then... Uh, Kwara government, yeah, governor chief of staff dies of uh, COVID-19. Buhari and Abdurazak Abdul Mon, may God rest him. Medical Guild Fort Lagos for sacking 30 health workers. A lightning strikes seven cows dead in Ocean. Okay, I wonder why it made the, the front page of the newspaper. Well, 774,000 jobs. Kayamo Adamant in Giga apologizes to senators on page 30, 34. Ogun traditional worshippers, Islamic leaders clash over suicide victims, corpse on four and five, pages four and five. Uh, and five of the Punch newspaper impeachment on the deputy governor sues assembly and house uh, serves notice on page nine. I think basically we have uh, spoken about everything, everything here, but maybe quickly. Um, I think we missed it out in the previous one where it says um, we need 50 million naira to get the PPEs for those who are going to supervise the examination for WAEG. What's your thought, I? Uh, well, so for me, uh, the, the first thing uh, that was even where I, I, my attention was focused on this is the issue of why I can come into this. I think I saw a report where Ghana, Ghana has said that there's like outbreak amongst uh, cases of COVID-19 mm -hmm. among some of the schools that have been opened. So we need to be very careful uh, about this. Uh, well, sometimes all of this comes down to the system that we're in. Here in, in, in UK, uh, part of the things they've decided was that they were going to use their a predicted grade because they have where the students are in school they always have you have your predicted grade mm -hmm. and then you have your they, before you're going to exam even when they apply for admission is that predicted grade that they use initially and then if their result matches so if we had a system that was good that's where we should, what we should be doing and one of the things they say you feel that by January if you are not if you feel that your predicted grade you can do you, you can get more than that you can come and write your exam so right now having students going back uh, Sorry about that. Mm. Right now, having students going back to school, it's a bit, you know, we are not there yet. Life is so, with the way things are. But then for me, uh, whatever, I don't know uh, how much they sell this uh, 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 equipment, how much they sell these gear that uh, uh, YF need. But of course, they need to be safeguarded. Mm. They need to be, uh, they need to be, they need everything for them to be able to safeguard themselves to and supervise. So uh, whatever we, we, we need to do, uh, we should, the, the, the government should ensure that they, they get the right equipment and they get the right materials that they need to protect themselves. Otherwise, they're excluded of writing the exams. Mm. Just need to be safe first before writing yeah. any exams. Even yeah. for the students also. But I thought, okay, we missed a headline earlier on. I saw where they said no face mask, no, uh, no exam. No exam. Mm. They, they, it was, I can't remember which of the papers. That too is important. And also providing, ensuring that we give them the spacing that they need and, uh, and the, the hand sanitizers and everything that we need to be very, very serious about. It's, very, it's not something that we should joke with uh, at all, at all. Mm -hmm. And then, hey, the, the spacing, we, we stop a lot of gymnastics. I don't know whether they still call it gymnastics, but that's what we call it during our time, during the exam. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Aisha Isufu, co-convener of Bring Back Our Girls, and of course, our contributor this morning on uh, of the Press. I want to say thank you very much, Aisha, and keep safe out there. Thank you. All right. So what's the plan to yeah, thank you. Thank you too. All right, that's how we wrap it today on Off the Press. We we'll do this Monday to Friday. The time is 8.30 a.m. here on Plus TV Africa. My name is Amaka Okoye, reminding you to keep safe out there. <laughs>